Now I'll call upon uh, uh, Ms. Anupam Nidhi to share how a CSR department within an organization really works with the directors, uh, work with the employees uh, in engaging with the society to create an impact. Touching more than 200, 200 million lives uh, through his work, his businesses, uh, across almost like 4 lakh villages and 21,000 towns. Apart from that, we have been able to, as part of our social commitment, corporate, uh, corporate social commitment, uh, we have been able to touch base at least 2 million lives every year. And our focus has been over the years, we are a young company, but our focus has been in the uh, years uh, majorly in the spaces of healthcare. Uh, we look at education, we look at environment, we look at health uh, employability as well. We look at many others, there are total 11 because of the diversity of the group that we have. And each of these areas focus on specific issues that we see which are critical and need to be tackled or taken care of or worked upon with our partners uh, in those communities that we are. So for example, working with senior citizens, silvers as we call, is a very, very important aspect for us in social responsibility as CSR. We work with youth, and especially the differently abled youth. We work with women, we work with uh, farming communities as well. So having said what we do, um, very quickly, it's, of course everybody knows what CSR is, it's an operational philosophy. And as Ranaji mentioned that, uh, volunteering and the fact that it has to be intrinsic to the larger uh, being of an organization. It is very, very critical for us to engage with volunteers and especially that's a challenge for us as well to engage with volunteers on a sustained basis. Uh, but yes, there has been some very, very uh, good models that we have been able to evolve over the last five years and they have been uh, sustainable, that too. And I would probably often share that later at, at some point in time. Um, what we have been uh, able to bring on as, uh, if I look at, uh, in, in case of, uh, let me just go on to the sustainability, sorry. Yeah, so how do we look at uh, in making CSR an intrinsic part of our business? So we focus on our strengths, and our strengths as we look at are our three pillars, that are our people, our processes, and our product services. So any intervention that we do on ground has to have either of these three pillars or all of these three pillars. And this is how we look at institutionalizing the whole social responsibility in the larger working of our business. So it is very, very intrinsic to our business uh, operational philosophy and it is being led by the CEOs of the organizations. Um, having said that, uh, so we look at more than two lakh children uh, in the, through the education portfolio every year. Uh, we work with uh, them on not just looking at bridging the literacy divide, but also looking at digital literacy as well. There are many footprints that we have, and we work around with more than 24 states across the country. Uh, we have a preeminent uh, in uh, teaching institution called the Dhirubhai Ambani Institute for ICT, which again is focusing on ICT and ICT-related education uh, in India. With healthcare, we focus on more than 4.5 uh, lakh people every year, and we work with them not just looking at the curative, but promotive and preventive health care. We bring in technology in this case, like telemedicine and many other interventions, through which we ensure the reach and our out, uh, the, the effectiveness of our interventions on ground. Now coming on to, which is very important, is the employability. Now employability is something that we have been focusing over the last four years, and our focus has been to build skills for employability through our foot program footprints, which are like Prayag, uh, looking at Naya Shai, Naya Dishai, there's Ikmoka Ada. We look at women, cyber women, that's a program which focuses on women and digital literacy are for women. Um, we work with, of course, ITI it's on the vocational scaling part of it, and we also have something called the NIS Pata, whom we work with, who's a training arm for us, and which works on employability skilling again. We have been able to reach out to 55,000 people so far, uh, and we focus on around 17 states as of now. Now, over these years, our focus 
has been skilling and creating these models which will last, which will work wonders and which will bring about change and actually touch lives. Our focus is not to be providers there. We are enablers in those areas and we believe in working in partnership with people. But there has been a lot of learnings as well and uh, some of those learnings I would like to share with you here. One of it is making learner the center of the whole program and not just the outcome of how many numbers of students train, but making their needs and their expectations, balancing that out with the realistic, uh, like we were talking about, that the resources are uh, not enough, there are a lot of other challenges, but then balancing their expectations and also looking at how you could maintain quality and relevance in your programs, relevance as of date, how, how relevant are your programs, and how quality, what quality are you delivering to those programs, through those programs. What is very, very critical, and I would keep talking about it as I go by, is trainers, quality trainers, and that's something which is missing in India. Uh, we do not, and we have found it time and again, a huge challenge for us to deliver and to identify the right kind of trainers on ground. And it is very, very difficult to have a qualified trainer who could actually bring in the kind of impact that we are looking in. And if your trainers are compromised, your programs will get compromised, and so the outcomes, and so the, uh, the quality of those who are the students that you are producing. Then skill building with the bigger picture of income generation is something that we miss on. We focus on just two months of training or probably six months of training, but income generation, are we actually creating those skills where they could uh, later on be able to uh, do the income generation in whatever way that may be. ICT is something that we realized was very, very useful for us. And technology, we believe, would be able to take us in terms of the reach and effectiveness across whatever we are doing. Skilling should not be just mere, again, one, one needs to look at that our skilling or our programs are not really furthering migration, because migration is again another problem. And what uh, we were uh, being introduced earlier, that how hundreds smart cities and what's happening to the urban uh, spaces is, is something that we need to look at and we need to localize our efforts so as to ensure that migration levels are reduced. Uh, then again, what we realized was we, what we were missing was women, women as the potential learner. And that's what we saw was a huge use space. And there's something that I would like to, uh, to add on is the farming community, people who are increasingly losing their lands, how to reskill them is something that we also thought is, is a uh, potential area which I would want you to also look at. And Tamil Nadu being a space where it is heavily been on agro, with so much of industrialization happening and making India coming up, where would these farmers go once they lose their land? So that's something that we need to look at. Then create effective convergence between school education. What, what we realized was just one month of training or six months of training would not really bring in those skills which they require. What is required is something which would be probably starting at the school level itself. So work on skilling at the school level rather than realizing, okay, now we need to create a window where for a few months we need to bring them to a level or a platform where we skill them and then we say, okay, now you're skilled, so please find a job for yourself or you find a job. They would not be able to mainstream. So skilling, I think, has to start somewhere at the school level and not really after one has already reached a space where we realize there's an emergency situation there. And also we realize that need for accreditation affiliation and certification is, is very, very important. And as the whole topic of today's uh, session is convergence, I think convergence is something that we were looking at, we were struggling with because there was, there were almost like 17 ministries looking at skilling. And uh, government has actually taken a lot of steps over the last few years. Uh, whether that was with the National Skill De uh, Development Agency as the uh, main agency autonomous body coming up to look at skilling across, whether it was through the skill uh, sector skill councils or whether it was notifying the national skill uh, qualification framework or whether it was talking about setting up a complete different, uh, uh, separate ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship which led to convergence hopefully as we go along and I'm sure uh, that will, will yield a lot of uh, goodwill amongst all of us to contribute further into it. And as somebody mentioned about the whole STAR, the whole STAR as, as, as a program which not only talked about accreditation of those who have successfully done the program, but also gave them some monetary reward for them to get motivated and come into in far larger numbers. 
Of course, uh, there were other interventions like the model loan scheme by the Indian Bank Association and of course making it as part of the CSR guidelines. But going forward, there are still more challenges that we need to look at and I think we need to look at together. And some of those are, and I would here appeal to the ICT Academy of trainers. If you were set up for a mandate to train te uh, trainers or teachers for engineering schools, uh, colleges, why can you not look at some that fill up that space which is vacant for finding out skilled trainers? There are not, not there aren't any formal institutions in India to uh, train uh, trainers for skilling purpose. So I think that's where we need to look at. And ICT, I believe, would be able to do a big role, play a big role there with the government to create such trainers who are uh, who are actually trained through a formal laid down process and they come into the space and they then further train the, uh, the, uh, the set of people there. So formal training setups is something which is very important and I believe uh, ICT Academy and others can play a major, major role there. Then uh, expanding and upgrading of infrastructure. We realize if you partner with the local uh, government bodies, there aren't any infrastructure available or there's minuscule. So you need, one needs to work on upgrading those infrastructure, whether it is through the ICT part of it or whether we are talking about the physical infrastructure. Upgrading the quality of training and standardization is another area that we feel is, is very critical and has to be worked on. Focus on occupational mobility is something that I have spoken about, that we need to look at how rural regions which are dependent on agriculture, and how can we build up their occupational mobility. And uh, finally, somebody also mentioned about the skilling. How can you glamorize skilling? I'm sorry for lack of a better word, I'm using glamorizing, but skilling, how many of us would actually want our children to get into skilling? And not many of us. So how do you make it a, a, a creative, um, opportunity for youth to get into skilling. And I think crux is that skilling has to start at the school level and there has to be importance given uh, to these uh, skilling as, as, as a platform. Need to create demand specific skill develop, development is another where we would want to look at it more than the supply part of it. It has to be looked at from the demand side. And finally, partnership. And partnership would happen between not just the government but the corporates, the, uh, the social society, that is the civil society, and, and the people. So the, the, the partnership is something which will take us through this whole mandate of 100 million youth to be scaled over uh, in, the, in the next few years uh, till 2022. So I think uh, we need to get together and create those partnerships, create those convergence together where institutions like yours, as in the uh, ICT Academy, uh, corporates like us, the government funding, and the platforms which are already existing come together along with the civil society which looks at the mobilization and the uh, later half of that follow up, comes together and do interventions on ground and that's when the change will happen. And I believe and I'm an optimist here that change will happen and we would be able to scale those many numbers that we have uh, decided upon. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We always see an optimist uh, in a CSR department, uh, always. So uh, uh, th thanks for the words. I, I think a lot more of, again, emphasis laid on skilling more at the school level uh, rather than uh, just happening towards skills for jobs uh, in that sense. Also, you, uh, she touched upon some of the livelihood opportunities in terms of uh, rapid urbanization, what happens to uh, agriculturists, uh, focus back on uh, farming, uh, livelihood opportunities that need to be created. Those are areas of interest for some of the corporates. So there needs to be specific solutions around uh, livelihood and those organizations which focus in those areas uh, would be very much uh, relevant there. Uh, uh,